Welcome back to New York Comic Con. I'm Megan Laux with CBR, and today I am joined with Mark Silvestri. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm good, Megan. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah. How's Con treating you? Look at this. It's crazy. This has been great. I mean, the fans are awesome, and uh, it's wonderful to be back at conventions, and everyone's just having a great time. I don't know about you, but I've seen nothing but smiles, so oh, that's, yes. that's always a good sign. Yeah, tons of cosplays, tons of smiles. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Um, in November, you have a DC Black Label yes. story coming out called Batman Joker Deadly Duo. Yes. What made you want to put these two on a team together? That's exactly why I wanted to do it, <laughs> was that reaction, right? As I've known Jim Lee for years, you know, 30 years plus, right? And uh, ever since he went over to DC, he's like, hey, come on over to do a Batman. It's like, you do a great Batman, come do one. I was like, Jim, I got, I got a business to run. <laughs> I, got a, I have a life to lead, you know, come on. Uh, but uh, he wore me down a little bit, at least to the point where it was like, because I'm a big Batman fan. I grew up on the old TV series. Who doesn't love Batman? And I, I had this story in the back of my head. I was like, you know, I'm going to pitch this story. And they're going to say no, because it's been done a million times. And then I'm out. You know, then you can't bother me anymore. So I, I, uh, it was Bob Harris, I believe, um, that I pitched it to at, uh, at San Diego show. This was seven years ago, so it's been a while. So, okay, here's the pitch. Batman and Joker team up together against a new common enemy. Okay, I'm out. So, That's cool. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's like, what are you talking about? Batman's 80 years old. You haven't done that to death. It's like, no, we haven't. It's like, really? It writes itself. All right, I guess I'm, I guess I'm in. So, all right, I'll tell this story. And um, I had where I wanted to start and where I wanted to end. And the cool thing was that Bob said, look, don't worry about continuity. Right? Don't. Just do whatever you want to do. And this was before Black Label, right? So it was going to be a standalone series. And I can do whatever I want, which is great, because I do stuff. You know, some characters go through some things, which I couldn't do in continuity, uh, which was very freeing. And I was able to tell this story about, you know, the, the classic, iconic characters that are two sides of the same coin, which doesn't really exist with any other characters to the level it does with Batman and Joker. And that's what makes these two special. And that's what I wanted to really explore. You know, what was it that made that special, that relationship? And what happens if you made that relationship the one side of the same coin, right? What if you forced these two opposing forces to work together, right? What would that look like? And how can you tell that story? And that's what was intriguing to me, right? So uh, I just kind of went from there, right? And it was fun to fill in the blanks, to fill in the space between A, where it starts, and Z, where it ends, with, okay, what is it about what they have to do together that makes this important for Batman's skill set? As we all know, the world's greatest detective, right? And also, Joker's skill set. What do you mean Joker's skill set? He doesn't, he's crazy. He's insane. That's his skill set. And there's one of my favorite moments in the series is when Batman realizes, to his horror, that not only does he have to work with the Joker, he needs to work with the Joker, right? It's not just that he's forced to, it's that he realizes at a certain point, which I, I hope is horrifying for the readers, it's like, Batman needs the Joker. That's terrible, but it's fun, right? And the story just kind of takes off from there, so. Those are the kind of things that just, like, to me, for this story, that's what it appealed to me. There's been numerous uh, Batman DC Black Label stories. How are you going to make yours stand apart from the rest? Well, I, I think um, the very concept is helpful for that, to make it stand apart. It's they, you have these two bitter enemies uh, since the beginning, in 80, you know, 80 plus years, whatever it is. And now they have to work as teammates, literal teammates. That's why it's the deadly duo, right? And I think through the whole seven issues, um, Batman says maybe five lines to the Joker, but the Joker will not shut up. <laughs> and it's like, this is a lot of fun, right? And, and I think, um, again, that exploring the, the two sides of, this, of that same coin, uh, I think I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a unique uh, tack on that. Um, and hopefully, by the end of it, the reader will go, wow, okay, that was really very interesting. I hadn't thought about that with Batman. I hadn't thought about that with the Joker. And I hadn't thought about what would happen if the two of them had to deal with those separate stories together. All right. So um, I think you know it, it's that dynamic of the characters, 
and my visual take might be a little bit different. Um, it's all very organic, and I, I have the character moments in there, but I also bring in some of that 90s bombast, you know, which I think people want to see, right? It's, mm -hmm. That's probably why it's seven and a half issues long. <laughs> the last issue is actually, you know, uh, 30 pages as opposed to 22. And that was because I was right, as I was writing it, more and more in interesting things were popping up in my head. It's like, wow, they should do this, they should do this to make it more impactful when they finally wind up here, right? This ending that, that was really important that I had to land. And I, by the time I got to like writing issue five and a half, uh, hey, Jim, <laughs> I need an extra issue because <laughs> yeah. I really have to nail this landing. Yeah. It's all about the landing, right? Whether, whatever it is, comics, movies, TV, if you don't nail that landing, you, you've lost the audience, right? So I needed extra room to make that landing work. Because I think the journey that they go through, um, both individually, the Joker and Batman, uh, and especially together, as they learn more about themselves because they have, work, have to work together, um, it's really important that at the end of those individual journeys that that landing really hits. And I hope that's where the, uh, the impact really happens for the reader. It's like, a, oh, I wasn't thinking of that. Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, you know, hopefully that kind of stuff is going to make it stand out from the other, like, just millions of Batman stories that have been told, you know, which is great. You know, um, been amazing Batman stories. You know, this is my little slice of the Batman universe that I got to play in. Excellent. Were there any other Batman stories that you were thinking of as inspiration while you were doing this? Uh, you know, that's interesting because I consciously made sure not to read Batman books. You know, I didn't want to, you know, I, I looked at, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Greg Capullo, so I looked at Greg Capullo's Batman, I'm a big fan of Jim Lee's Batman, obviously, and, and of course there's, you know, the Dark Knight, you know, there's Frank Miller, you know. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, uh, but I just wanted to see, like, what's, what is Batman these days? Because I don't have a lot of time to read comic books. And the thing that was really freeing that I realized was it didn't matter because you know, every creator makes their own Batman. They put their own stamp on Batman. So that's what I did. It's like, oh, I'll just do my own Batman. So I, got a, I give him some new toys, um, got to do a new Batmobile, because I'm an old car guy, and it's like, oh, that's fun to do Batmobile. Gave him a new Bat Cave, which I call a Bat Cavern, which, uh, again, uh, like Batman and Joker you know, and Gotham, the Bat Cave is an actual other character. And it's... There's a subtle thing that I do that I hope people kind of pick up on. They will now because I'm about to spoil it. But um, they'll notice when they first see the Bat Cavern in issue one, it's this huge, expansive space like this, right? And it's well lit. They see everything. There's multiple Batmobiles everywhere. And, you know, as the story gets darker, as we go through that journey into the heart of darkness, and as we really start to explore a, ba a black label book, because mm -hmm. uh, things happen. Um, the actual Batcave itself becomes smaller and more claustrophobic around Batman, right? Yeah. As, the, as his world gets darker, not only Gotham gets darker and smaller, but the Batcave itself gets darker and smaller. You see less and less of it until it's just him in front of a monitor. That's all you really see at that, you know, as it gets to that point. So that was really important to me. It was like giving those little subtle cues to the reader that they may not be aware of and there's a lot of those in there, so I only spoiled that little one. Uh, but again, it's like, I, I, as people read this series, not only, oh, that's really cool and big and bombastic, and there's a double page spread of Batman doing Batman stuff, and there's a, another double page spread of Batman doing more Batman stuff. It's all fun, but it's all part of um, the story, and it's all part of the character development, and, and you want those thrills to hit you, but you want them to hit you because the quiet moments will hit you even harder at that point. So, you know, all those little subtle things I want in there along with the big stuff, you know, but, I, but subconsciously I want readers to start feeling, feeling a little like there's danger looming over their shoulders mm -hmm. as they're reading it. And as Batman's world, it gets more and more dangerous um, because my Batman is imperfect. He makes mistakes and he pays for those mistakes which also I, I thought was very, very interesting. Um, and how does that relationship with the Joker play out because of those mistakes? I'm a big believer in uh, 
the comedy, because there is light stuff in here, obviously. You know, in the darkness, there's light, right? Because the Joker is like, it's a funny guy in my book. Um, so you're going to have those fun moments that kind of cut into the dark moments. Um, but those are the kind of things I want to hit. And I, and I, and I hope that the readers uh, have as much fun with that, reading it, as I did when I was writing it and drawing it. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits of being the writer and the artist on this story? I don't know if they're benefits sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I've been in this business for 40 some years and it's like I've uh, been lucky enough to work with some of the best writers and creators in comics. Um, sometimes it would drive you crazy as an artist because you'd have someone say, okay, I want all these teams of heroes to be fighting all these teams of villains and they have to do this and, and this oh, on the city by the way is crumbling behind them and I want all that in one page right so, oh geez okay so I, I promised myself I was not gonna do that you know so it's like as a writer it's like I, I am not gonna do this to the artist who is me I'm gonna just write what I draw but as I was writing the story it's like oh this would be a really cool moment this would be a really cool moment and these cool moments which were all like character driven um, and had to be in there were stuff that were required the artist later to draw that maybe they didn't want to draw. It's like, well, too bad, I'm writing this right now. <laughs> so it's like, suddenly as a writer, I forgot about the artist, right? It's like, oh, because I just wanted to tell that story. And then when it got to the point where the artist had to draw what the writer drew, it's like, that guy, what an a-hole. <laughs> I can't believe he wrote, oh, <laughs> So you know, I had to go through those moments, but I also gave myself those moments where I was like, oh cool, I got to draw Batman doing Batman stuff across two pages, you know, that's cool. I like the writer again, that's all, oh, then the next page is, oh, that guy, when I meet him, I'm gonna, oh God. So it was like, it was this great push and pull creatively, right? Um, and again, it spanned over like seven years, you know, so it was like, I, I had moments where I could take a break from myself um, and the book, but, um, you know, Jim and DC were very patient, so I appreciate that. And, uh, and I hope when, when the fans get it in their hands, they kind of go, oh, okay, uh, we forgive him for taking that long, because I'm being entertained right now. And that's, look, that's the, end, that's the end goal, right? It's gotta be entertaining. Awesome, well thank you, Mark, so much for joining us today. My pleasure. I'm Megan with CBR. Make sure to check out Batman, Joker, Deadly Duo in November of this year, and check out CBR for more New York Comic Con content.